Uh, this is Rocky Flats with Greenlight Radio, and I have on the phone Mr. Justin. How do you pronounce your last name, Justin? Pearson. Pearson? Yep. Okay, Justin Pearson from <laughs> Dead Cross, Retox, Locust, a variety of bands. Um, but in this instance, we are talking about Dead Cross. Uh, I, you guys did come to town recently, and I did miss you, and I was very disappointed in myself. Um, but before we jump into that, I want to talk a little bit about your background. Um, now, you are bassist, correct? Yes. And you have always been the bassist in every band you've been in? No, I sing in some bands. Okay, okay. Um, now, I didn't get a chance to review too much of your music. I checked out the Locust album. And I checked out Retox, um, whatever the Locust 1990, I think it was 99 album. Yeah, that's, that's one of the, not a very good one. But um, in the Locust, uh, I play bass and I sing. There's and there's three of us that sing um, for the most part. So I'm I'm not the only singer. And then in Retox, I just sing. I don't play bass. Got you. So you're the singer for Retox. Okay. okay. Yes. I was digging the Retox. Um, I was listening to a few tracks from that. Um, that's cool. an awesome act. I like that. Uh, was that your creation? Uh, me and the guitar player Mike Crane, who's also in Dead Cross. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's the guitarist for. Dead Cross as well. Correct. Yeah, correct. Okay, weird. It wasn't showing me that on the wiki. Can't trust Wikipedia these days, I tell you. Yep. <laughs> um, so how did you get connected with Dave Lombardo and Mike Patton and start this project, Dead Cross? Um, I was uh, – I worked on a previous project. Uh, my, my other band, Headwind City, recorded with Ross Robinson. And so I think just like randomly Ross was working on um, a friend of his um, – uh, like a demo for a friend of his, this singer songwriter, and he asked if I wanted to come up and play bass on it. And um, and then he just mentioned that um, that Dave was playing drums, and then he wanted to know if a uh, guitar player for Retox would be into playing guitar. And so um, so me and Mike and Dave ended up playing on this um, this girl Poppy Jean Crawford on her um, on her um, on her like a demo or, so, or something. And so so that was how we all got into the same room. And then at the time. Uh, Dave's band film had stopped playing, and so he he and Mike had this idea to put together a band to play some shows, and then the shows turned into more shows, and then an album, and then um, I don't know, like about a you know whatever, like maybe a year into it or something. Um, our original singer Gabe Serbian, who is the drummer for the Locust, he ended up um, quitting, um, and so so we you know, needed a new singer. We wanted to finish the album and that's where Mike Patton came into play. And, and then, you know, with Patton, it was like him and Lombardo and Phantomas. And then, um, the Locust and Retox both have done records on, um, Ipecac. And then also, um, uh, I've toured with, with Tomahawk and, uh, oh, nice. and Phantomas. So, yeah. Nice. What's it like working with Mike Patton and Dave Lombardo? What's it like working um, with these guys? It's really easy, uh, co- coincidentally, except for the fact that, uh, Patton wanted us to all sing his backup, so it was it was it was a uh, it was kind of like uh, I mean I, I sing in in you know other bands or whatever, sure. but I'm I'm not really um I'm not I, I don't know I I mean I, I don't have as I obviously don't have as much of a range a vocal range, and so it was it was just weird to like be put into something and say like here can you sing this even though like I probably wouldn't have written it that way if I'm playing. Like in the Locust, when I would write stuff, it, it, the consideration of can I play my bass and sing this vocal line that I wrote would would work, you know. Sure. My brain. So so it was like these other you know rhythms, and it was kind of tricky at times. But that I mean that was the only like I wouldn't even say it's negative. It's just it was just um it was just sort of like a, a, a you know what it was like a challenge, and and I, I I was just I'm totally up for it. Um, I think it came out rad after a few shows, and we got it down. But uh. Yeah, working with those guys is pretty easy. So, I yeah, I um I picked up the when I first heard Dead Cross, I picked up the actual record that uh-huh. you guys made, which is an awesome print, by the way. I don't know if you've Thanks. seen it, but amazing. Um, uh, and one thing I noticed about the the music and everything in it is that it's very tight for how fast and thrashy a lot of it is. It's insanely tight. I don't think I've heard anything that tight in a while. Um, when it comes down to metal. So is that something that took touring to get to that level before you made it? No, the no, we had never, you mean as a band, we had never even, um, we never played with, with Patton. Or, I mean, we only played, I think, nine shows before Patton joined. And, 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 uh, most of the material was written kind of like after, you know, the, the, the initial shows. So, I mean, it was, there was, it was just a lot of, I mean, I think it was just, 
and a lot of it was actually written in the in the studio. So no, I don't know. Um, I think that maybe we've just all been doing our own collective things for so long that it kind of just happened to be like that. But another thing is like I, I don't really. F- I mean, I, I see that it's it's tight, but I mean, I don't think there's any other option, you know. Like, that's sure, just, you, you can't like just make a sloppy record, you know. It's just well, no, um, especially when you. I, I don't know. I would imagine. <laughs> I mean, it's just well, yeah, but I mean, it's just it's like just play it tighter and write and write, <laughs> you know, right. and then you and then you you just have to do it. There's no other option. So, uh, I think if you have an outlook like that, it'll come out, uh, <clears> I guess, more proficient. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, this album. It isn't like a lot of metal albums. It seems to mix a lot of metal and punk. Um, what what made you guys sort of go this route? What how did you guys go this route with this album? What was the inspiration? What made you go this sound direction? Um, I mean, when we started, it was very loose. You know, like uh, we we had I think twelve days to write uh, music for a set, a live set. So so, um, I mean. You, in retrospect, you know, you throw the, the, like me, Mike, and Dave into a room, Mike Crane, um, it, you know, and the, and the music pretty much sounds like the, like collectively, like some Locust Retox and Slayer sort of stuff, and, and, you know, ish. And then, you know, um, so I mean, it w- I don't know, it was just kind of like rushed and urgent, and, you know, and it was like a weird time. I mean, it's always like a weird time socially or, or politically, and I think that like it also influenced like sort of the, like, the abrasiveness of the, the, the weirdness of it, you know, like, sure. uh, that just kind of came out uh, naturally, I, I guess, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Um, do you guys travel on the same tour bus? Uh, we travel in a van, um, same van. Okay. Same difference. Bus van. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What do you guys practice or do you guys just practice on tour and that's it? Uh, no, we do practice in Los Angeles. Um, okay. Fortunately for me, I don't live there, but but yeah, we uh, we we do practice up there. Nice, nice. Now, were you were you a fan of um uh, going to the like Mike Patton's work? Were you ever a fan of? It sounds like you went on tour with Tomahawk. Were you a fan of Mr. Bungle? Uh, um, yeah, totally. I think like I really, I really got into Mr. Bungle at a, at a at a kind of a great time. I think when like when there was a lot of experimental music kind sure. of coming about, you know, and and it, I think that. I mean, even like the locust sort of seems like a, a, a in that realm. Uh, yeah. I, I suppose of like technical absurdity or something. Especially so, for uh, that time that it came out. Sure, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that I mean, and then when Phantomas came out, I mean, the locust is already a band for quite a while. But I was like, um, when Phantomas came out, it was kind of like, as far as Mike Patton's resume, that's my favorite band. I, I feel like it was like, oh, this is like. You know, it's like oh, this is very comfortable for me. You know, because yeah. you know, and also I, I mean. I'm I'm familiar with the rest of the, that band, you know. Uh, I mean, um, and so it was cool to see that as well. Um, but yeah, um, Mr. Bungle and, and Phantom Moss are, are probably my favorite of, of Patton's projects. What about Lombardo? What's your What's your favorite of his past projects? Oh, I mean, Obviously I grew Slayer, up listening yeah. to Slayer when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think mean, I've seen them live like eight times now. Yeah. In my life um, yeah, I mean, I, I had met uh, a couple of them when I was 12 years old, which was pretty cool. So I guess that kind of was an interesting tidbit, but uh, not not Dave, unfortunately. But um, but yeah. So you know, growing up with Slayer was, and I grew up in Phoenix. There's a lot of like metalheads and stuff there. Sure. And I remember like I remember buying you know Show No Mercy when it when it came out and just kind of like tripping out on how evil it, uh, that band was. <laughs> right. What is the first metal band you got into? Um, man, I don't know. I will. Uh, or at least an influence to it that got you in that direction. I mean, I was really psyched on Septic Death when that when that record came out. I don't know if it's. I mean, that's more like thrash. I got it from this this Thrasher skate rock compilations, and uh, I just remember like hearing that song "Thaw" by Septic Death and kind of being blown away. Nice. How old are you? I'm 42. 42. Okay, you're like my age. Okay. Sweet. Um, now what? Um, you guys just finished. Are you guys still on tour? Or are you guys just finished a tour? We're finished the the first U.S. tour. Yeah. Okay. How did that go for you? How did you feel about it? Uh, felt great about it. It was um, it was pretty rad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a really good response and uh, a lot of fun and and uh, um, it was it was fun all around. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What um? Let's see here. What else I got here for you? Okay, I I uh, reached out and reached out to some fans for questions, so I have like three from them. Okay, and they're a little ridiculous, just for the 
<laughs> I'll start easy. Uh, first off, from fan, uh, why don't you wear face paint? Uh, why would you wear face paint? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. That's a good one. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of also a bit of like a like a clean freak. I don't. I don't really want like mm. shit all over my face. I, I hear that. Then you got to clean it all <laughs> off. You got to put it back on like every tour, every show. That would you know. Yeah, what I mean? and I mean a lot of times. I mean, look at like. I don't know, like Kiss. They were so they look so fucking foul underneath. I guess that's why they have it. Really. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I mean, no. I mean, I think of like I kind of know like, Gene Simmons being a piece of shit, and it's like, yeah, cut. You better cover your face. <laughs> right. It, yeah, it's almost like, like a, a gimmick. If your gimmicks seem to cover up talent to me a lot of time. Sure. You know? yeah. Um. Let's see here. Where? Okay. Here's a good one. Uh, what political influences uh, inspired the lyrics to this album? That's going to be a question for Patton. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as, a, as, sure. a, as, a, as a lyricist, I would love to say what, what I think it, it, it comes from. But I mean, I, I mean, we're on a, it's, I mean, if you, if you read the lyrics, you can kind of see the political spectrum. Yeah. Um, and where, and where we fit. Um, even your so, music videos do that as well. Yeah. It's a, there's a message there. I mean, it's a, maybe not as, um, overt as some people, but it's, sure. it's, it's definitely there if you pay attention. What outside of metal and punk do you actually appreciate as music? What would be a style of music that people may not expect you to like? Oh man, I, I listen to everything. Um, I mean, I grew up like listening to like a lot of weird synth, kind of like synth pop, or like even like noise stuff, like just early noise. Or um, I mean, I love like you know bands like the Cramps. Um, uh, what else? I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it's my my taste in music is pretty eclectic. Um, I always, I, I always, when I ask that question, I always figure I should ask what music style do you not like listening to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because people listen to a lot. I mean, I do. I even like. I mean, there, there, there's even like Britney Spears tracks that I think are good. I mean, I think that like if you can find something in it, then that's cool. But like, there's a lot of like insincerity and kind of like cheapness in music, and that's mm-hmm. the, and that and that falls in any genre. I mean, and and I don't even really consider myself like you know, like a metalhead or like, I mean, I like metal. I grew up with it, but I mean, ethically and aesthetically, I'm a punk sure. and that's, and, and I'm, you know, I grew up listening to punk and hardcore, but I mean, I, I don't know. And to be honest though, like I don't really even listen to that much music. I, I, I work on a lot of music and I listen to like, you know, my friends' bands and stuff, but like um, for the most part, I mean, I, I listen to NPR a lot um, and, <laughs> and just kind of try to take in like the current political climate. You know, I mean, I think you have to kind of be, on top of that shit, and then that is reflected in the in the music, not even like lyrically, but just like in the in, sure, know, like, just the, the intent music. and the feel of the music. Sure, and the totally. And yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. Now, now, can we expect a new album from Dead Cross? Yeah, we're already loosely working on it. We have a few songs. We had a few songs before we went on tour that we were playing, and um, a few new ones. And then uh, we've been working on a few. We have a few more. So yeah, we're we're working on a new album. Nice, nice. Um, are you guys planning on another tour, or is that going to be probably after that album's made? Uh, no, we are. I'm just not sure which, uh, where, and when. Um, but it, there's, it's being discussed. Uh, well, with, definitely, you know. definitely make Colorado a stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. I had to miss the show last time. I was not happy. I, I've uh, only, I've only too. seen, I've seen Slayer a lot. I've only seen Mike Patton once, and I have yet to see you perform. So yeah. that would be good. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. I believe that is all the questions that I have for you guys. Where can people find more information about you guys? Where can people find out, uh, where to get your albums? Is it, what's your website? Any kind of promo yeah. stuff? Sure. Sure thing. I mean, you can start with our social media. I mean, it all, it all kind of links in there. Um, you know, like Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter, but, um, it also, we're, you know, the album came out on Ipecac and 31G. So either, either of those labels, if you want to just Google it, you can find, um, our album. It's pretty easy. It's on iTunes and stuff too. So it's pretty easy to find it. All right. Sweet. All right. Thank you very much, Justin. I appreciate your time. Yeah. And, uh, hope to hear back from you again when you guys come back again. Thanks, man. And good luck pirating. I um, appreciate your effort.